Welcome to the third and final part of this tutorial series. In the last two parts, we created a JSON util class that we have been using to convert JSON strings into JSON node objects and to also some POJO objects that represent those JSON strings. There were very simple examples. On this third part, we'll be working with a little bit more complex examples that will show you how to create more complex mappings. So in the last part, we left this JSON util class like this. We have some methods that uh, convert strings into JSON nodes. And then also this one from JSON, which converts a JSON node into a POJO class. Our test case was very simple. We are going to do a little bit of refactoring now. So inside here, I'm just going to create a simple test.json. I'm just going to use this file to uh, write the JSON objects in a, a little bit more readable fashion. So like this, just to help me compose, like this, and I'm going to replace this bit like this, just to make it more readable. So imagine that in this next test case, we are wanting to pass something that has a date. So let's make it 2019, December 25th. So Christmas Day. And I'm going to give it a name. Christmas Day, like so. Imagine we want to pass this. We are going to create a new POJO, so, and we are going to call it uh, day POJO, like so. And we know that we have a date and a name, so private string name, private date, date. So I'm going to import the Java util date class this I'm going to create the setters and the getters like so and now we have something that matches uh, a POJO that matches this this JSON Copy this into my JSON test I'm going to say private string I'm going to create a string for this uh, JSON object which is going to be called day scenario one equals to this. And now I'm going to I'm just going to copy this test case here, create the one over here. I'm going to call day test scenario one. And instead of passing this one, I'm going to pass the day scenario one. And I'm going to want to convert that JSON string into this object. So this, and this, I'm going to get rid of this assert for the time being. And I'm going to do a system dot out dot print line just to see if we manage to convert the date properly. Because that's the only difference that we have from the previous one. So pojo dot get date. Like so. Let's execute and see what happens. So test a scenario and we've got the date. Now imagine for a second that we're using Java 8 or a newer version and we don't want to use this date one. We want to use the time package which is new on Java 8. And instead of date, I want to use a local date, like so. I'm going to rewrite this, these get and set a methods, like so. And let's see what's going on. Yep. So this is just to set my, uh, my language settings of this project, which I've just done. So I'm going to leave it like local date. And I'm going to run it again and see what happens. So 
So they test one scenario fails. And the reason is it doesn't know how to construct a local date from the string that we have. Okay, so it doesn't know how to convert this bit into a local date. Okay, this can be sorted by adding a module that exists for, for JSON, which is part of the that um, type, I think. Correct. And, it, and instead of JSON data bind, it's, just, it's going to be JSON data type. And I'm going to select, which is it? The JSR310. I'm going to put it like this. And now we're going to modify the JSON util class so that we load that module. So default. We're going to register it, new Java time module, which comes from just that type JSR 310. So this will make our object mapper support these new time classes. So let's give it a run and see what happens now. And there we go. Working perfectly. Let's replace this system out print line with some asserting. Assert equals say 2012 25 to date dot to string. Let's give it another run and see what happens. Good. So now we're not printing and we are certain that it works perfectly. Okay. So this is for the this test case. Now let's create a more complex test case. Let's imagine we want to have objects inside of objects and other types of parameters and all of that. So let's start with let's say we're going to make this an, an author name. So uh, hui. yeah, and now let's give it a books, which is a list, so an array of books, and each book is going to have a title. title one, I'm gonna have a in print variable, which is true in this case, and a date. I'm going to call it a publish date. Date. And 25. So, I'm going to create another one. False. I'm going to make it on the first of this year. Let's call it title two. Just a, as an example, I'm going to create the POJOs now. So first, I'm going to create the books POJO, which is going to have to take this in. So let's create a book POJO. And it has a title, which is a private string title. And we have a private boolean in print and we have a private local date publish date like this I'm going to import this date imported I'm going to create the get end set of methods like this that's the pojo one the book pojo done. So now I'm going to create the author pojo. And the author pojo from what we gather here has got uh, an author name and a list of books. So let's do it. So 
of the name, uh, private string of the name, like this, and a private list of book pojos, which is called books. Import the J Java util list, and I'm going to create the getter setter methods for both of them. Just organize this perfectly. Okay, and now I'm going to create our test case. So we create another one, private string book author book. Scenario. Like this. And I'm gonna use exactly well a copy of these of this one of this test. Say author other book scenario. Like this book scenario and author pojo. Go and let's use system outs print line to test this. So Pojo get the name now book Pojo from Pojo dot get books and for each book I'm gonna print this out book get title is in print and the date date and let's give it a run to see what happens and author book so author book tile one is it in print true date tile two print false and one of the fifth of uh, first of January so this is how we map more complex objects that have other objects inside other, other objects and you can do this uh, uh, well for a lot more complex cases but this simple simple case here just shows you that this is possible is just extending this a little bit more and it will work there are a few other modules that you can register but i would recommend you to check the json page and see the jackson page to see what other modules they have available and if you need anything for that. Also, on the deserialization features, this configuration features that you have, also give a look at this. Give it a look to see if some of the of some of these will solve any problems that you might have. Sometimes, especially these like fail on null for primitives, in case we're using like uh, in these Pojos here, like this boolean. This is uh, this is a primitive. So, in case that doesn't exist, or if it is set as null, do you, do we want this to blow up, or we'll just use the default value for the boolean? So, a lot of other options that you can configure to make the Jackson parser work to your liking. So, I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. I hope that all of this was pretty clear. But if you have any doubts drop a comment below and I'll try to get back to you and I'll see you on the next tutorials.